I'd be kind of surprised that landlocked Colorado, and specifically up at Colorado State University, is actually a hotbed of tropical storm updates. Many of the weather forecasts for tropical systems started with Dr. Gray up at CSU back about 30 or 40 years ago, and he made seasonal forecasts up until the time of his passing, and that tradition has continued. Some very good tropical forecasters up at Colorado State. So let's talk about what we're looking at here. We're looking at temperatures in the ocean down the Gulf of Mexico and the Atlantic Ocean. Right now they're not all that warm because we're just very early into the spring. But already the Southern Caribbean is pretty warm and we're seeing that warming getting up into the Gulf of Mexico. This will become very, very warm as we get deeper into the summer as it will off the coast of Florida with the Gulf Stream. But for right now, there's not that much energy for tropical systems. One of the things that we look at is what's called tropical storm energy. That's a combination of heat and moisture. The reason the tropical systems, their main season is basically starting in late May and continuing through the summer into the fall and ending around the first December is because that's when you get all of the hot water that feeds all those tropical storms building across the Atlantic Basin as well as into the Gulf of Mexico. So right now the water is a little bit cooler, but you'll notice the colors here gets a lot hotter as you get farther to the south. And speaking of that, the Pacific Ocean also plays a role in what happens in the Atlantic Ocean as far as hurricane conditions. For the last three years, we've been under La Nina, which is cooler water in the equatorial Pacific, and that changes the pattern of the jet streams. It flows not only across America, but kind of around the world and certainly over the Atlantic Basin, and the winds tend to be a little bit lighter over the Atlantic. The La Nina means that there's less shear in the atmosphere that can kind of cut off the building of the tropical system. So during La Nina conditions, we actually see more years that are more active in hurricane activity. This year, though, we are switching and going over to more of an El Nino condition. That's the exact opposite. Warmer water. El Ninos actually, although they oftentimes bring us a very stormy pattern around here, they tend to cut off the shear in those hurricanes, and we tend to get less hurricane activity during an El Nino year. We'll see what happens. Now, one of the things that is an impact on climate change is the hurricane season. And we're seeing that we're getting warmer water in the tropical Atlantic. That, of course, feeds more energy into the system. But there are other factors that I showed you, La Nina, El Nino. There's also the amount of dust that blows off of Africa. A lot of different factors. And so the hurricane seasons vary quite a bit. But the general trend is that we are seeing more and stronger hurricanes with climate change. And the percentage of those storms have become major hurricanes. Warmer air holds more water vapor so you can get greater rainfall and heavier storm surges. That also is increasing as the climate gets warmer. Uh, of course, we don't get the hurricanes here in Colorado, but at least we have the hurricane forecasters that are working here in Colorado.